Looking to take your financial knowledge to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to Ask Ralph. Offering accounting, technical, and financial advice. Whether you're looking to save taxes or improve your business, he's got you covered. Here's your host of Ask Ralph, Ralph Eastup Jr. Welcome back to the Ask Ralph Show. Today I thought I'd talk about the new IRS updated W-4 form and withholding calculator. Now there was a press release the IRS sent out on February 28th of this year where they released this new W-4 form as well as an updated withholding calculator. Now you might ask, why are we talking about this? Well, with this year, you know, we've got major changes in the tax law made by the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. And as a practitioner, you know, have my own clients, I get a lot of questions about this, and I thought it was good to talk about this for a few minutes because I think some people are go- are going to be in for a bit of a surprise. Now, let's start there. So what happened effectively is the Congress instituted a law where they overall, you know, decreased the tax rates and they also amplified some of the deductions. Now, that's going to impact people differently. So one of the things that they built into that was a change to the withholding tables. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that when you get your pay stub every week or every other week off and you get paid, one of the things you should be noticing is that your withholding for federal tax may have gone down. Now, getting a lot of questions from clients and a lot of phone calls about this because some of my clients are concerned that their withholding has gone down more than what they would have expected it to do. Now, the reason I say that is there's been a lot of talk in the press about how much the average American is going to have an additional uh, tax, uh, re- tax reduction or refund as it may be. And one of the things I'm concerned about with some of the things I'm seeing already is that people who generally have gotten a pretty sizable refund I think are going to find that with the changes to the tax tables, they may find that their sizable refunds have shrunk some. And those who were close to breaking even with these tax changes may end up owing some next year. So I'm definitely going to encourage everybody to take a look at this withholding uh, calculator. Now you can find all this information at the irs.gov. That's irs.gov. Now, so one of the things they recommend here, and I would definitely recommend this as well, is to take a look at doing a paycheck checkup. And what it says here is the IRS is encouraging employees to use the withholding calculator to perform a quick paycheck checkup. An employee with checking their withholding can help protect against having too little taxes taken out um, down the road. And I would definitely encourage, you know, all of uh, the people listening to do this because one of the things you may find out is that you end up, you may end up owing a little bit or getting less of a refund. You know, one of the things they mention here in this press release is the average American uh, gets a $2,800 refund. So, and this comes down to discussion that we've had many times on the show where, you know, do you want to get a, a bigger refund now or get more money as you go? So, you know, you really need to take a look at this. Now, the first step to reflect the law changes, the IRS changes withholding tables in January. Now, one of the things I'm really concerned about is if you really read into this, you know, they per- basically got rid of the personal exemptions. So one of the main focuses of the W-4 form was based on those uh those exemptions. Now that they're gone, I think it's going to be a little more difficult to really, you know, get into the changes in the W-4, but I'll take a few minutes and talk about those. Now, what the IRS says the most affected by this are the following, two income families, people with two or more jobs at the same time who work only part of the year, people with children who claim credit such as a child tax credit, people who itemized in 2017, and people with high incomes and more complex returns. Now, one of the things they recommend here is taxpayers with more complex situations might need to use publication 505, which is the tax withholding and estimated tax booklet. Or, as I would recommend, you know, go to see a professional like myself or someone else who can really go through your tax plan for 2018. That's something we're doing in our practice this year a lot. You know, every client that's coming in is asking the same thing. You know, Ralph, how is this going to impact me for next year? So that's one of the things that I've spent a great deal of time in, in our meetings already talking about. And one of the things I'm seeing is that there is generally a tax reduction. But one of the things I'm also seeing is when I press the clients a little bit more on, you know, what is your federal withholding look like? I'm getting comments like, well, you know, my federal withholding is $100 less each pay or $75 less each pay. So what I'm trying to explain 
explain to them is that what that's telling me is that you're not going to get a bigger refund come tax time. You're going to get that money as you go. And that may very well be the best choice anyway, but it's something that, you know, we definitely want to take a look at. So one of the things they talk about with using this, you know, withholding calculator, and again, it's found at irs.gov, you need to have some information in order to do this. So here's some things you're going to need. You're going to need your most recent pay stubs from work. And you want to make sure that it reflects the amount of federal income tax you've had withheld so far in 2018. If you've completed your 2017 return, have that handy because there's some information on there that will be useful. Keep in mind the withholding calculated results are only as accurate as the information you entered. So garbage in, garbage out. That makes sense. And you know, certain things could change during the year as well. The withholding calculator does not request personally identifiable information such as name, social security number, or address or bank accounts. So it's basically an online tool that just has a set of, you know, rules or, or uh, logic behind it that'll help you figure out what to do. You can use the results of that withholding calculator to determine if you should complete a new W-4 form, and if so, what information to put on that W-4 form. There's no need to complete the worksheets that accompany the W-4 if they use this calculator. And I will tell you, having looked at this W-4 form, the new one, it is somewhat complex because instead of just looking, like I said, at the exemptions, they've added more layers to that. And we'll talk about that in a moment. As a general rule, the fewer withholding allowances you enter on the W-4, the higher your tax withholding will be. I get asked this question a lot. So, for example, if you are married and you claim two dependents, you'll have a certain amount of tax. Now, if you go back to married zero, they will actually withhold more tax. Or if you went to married four, they would withhold less. So that 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 kind of sometimes fouls people up a little bit. But basically, entering a bigger number as an exemption means that you're going to have less tax tax withholding, resulting in potentially a smaller refund or a bigger tax bill. And you should definitely, once you do this calculator, submit a new W-4 form to your employer. Now, talking about the W-4 form, and you can find that online as well at the irs.gov, you'll notice that it is updated with the 2018 information. And the first page of it's going to look very similar to what you've seen in the past. But here's where it gets a little crazy and a little different. The next section is called Personal Allowance Worksheet. This you'll, 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 you'll recognize as the same as before. You know, enter one for yourself. Enter one if you're fail, uh, married filing joint and one if you're head of household. Then it talks about some other things. But these are the things that it's added to it. There's a whole section called Deductions, Adjustments, and Additional Income Worksheet. And what they're really keying in on here is the itemized deduction change. So basically, you know, the itemized deductions went from a little over 12000 up to 24000 So what this is doing is it's giving you that baseline and then you're subtracting out some things as well. But like I said, this is a bit of a change. And then, of course, the last part of this is the two earners multiple job worksheet. And this is what trips up a lot of clients, not just on this, but in general. You have to be really careful when you have a second job or if you have a spouse that makes considerably less or considerably more than you. And I see this a lot in my practice because uh, let's say your main job, you earn $30,000. Well, the tax tables will work for that because they're going to look at $30,000. Let's say you're single. But if you were to go get a part-time job and let's say you only earn five or 6000 it might not figure that out for you. So I hope this was helpful. Again, you can go to irs.gov. Check out the withholding calculator and the new W-4 form. You've been listening to Ask Ralph, brought to you by Sazio Accounting Plus. Please subscribe to and write our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. Our podcast is produced by Carolyn Peters. Thank you for listening and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Ask Ralph Media. You can also hear me each week on 1450 WILM and on 1410 WDOV in Delaware and on the iHeartRadio app. Submit your questions or ideas for future shows by sending an email to Ask Ralph at AskRalph.com. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Sagio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered.